All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Athlete and Artist Show. I am the artist, Kyle Forch, alongside the athlete, professional hockey player, Zach Boychuk. No guests this week, but still lots going on in hockey. Um, we got big Tyson-Paul fight this weekend. The PWHL is New Jersey. Chucky, you guys are just had your first game in the second round of the Champions Hockey League tournament. Big win for you guys. You want to talk about that? How was it to be back out there? And re- re- did you guys play in England this game? Yeah, we had to fly to Sheffield. So we had a bit of a crazy travel schedule the last few days getting in and out of there. But um, we had some tight connecting flights. We didn't get to fly private this time. Uh, oh, no. Saving some money for the Champions League. So, but pulled out with a, a huge win and got a little tight there i think we were up 3-1 like going into well there's like 10 minutes left or something then it was 3-3 uh after the second period and had two huge goals in the third to put it up 5-3 so the aggregate works like it's two games total score so right now we're we're two goals to zero and coming home to berlin uh, we play them again next tuesday at home so if they say like they beat you guys two nothing in the next game, what how does the tiebreaker work from there? So then I think it goes into like overtime. Okay. Maybe 10, 20 minutes, something some along those lines. And if nothing happens after that, it'll be shootout. So That's we've crazy. seen that in the past where I think it's like five shooters. Sometimes it goes to more seven, eight, nine, ten shooters to to move on to the next round pretty crazy damn but ho- does... hopefully we just take care of it uh in regulation at home yeah for sure that'll be nice to be back at home too you got the big road win out of the way be back at home in front of the fans i'm sure the building will be rocking yeah for sure but it was cool going to to sheffield like i've never really been to uh like i've been to london but some of the smaller cities uh we flew into manchester and took a, a bus to, to Sheffield and went to the rink. It's like an older rink, like 30 or 40 years old, but they fit over 9,000 people in the rink last night. And wow. the fans were buzzing the whole game. And we, we got to walk around downtown a little bit the day before. Uh, my dad actually came to town all the way from, from Calgary, nice. which is like, pretty long travel for him he came for one game and then flew out again the next day so it's crazy pretty crazy to have him come see his first uh champions league game but um sheffield's a a pretty cool city cool organization and hockey in england is starting to get pretty big that's awesome i i had a buddy that played uh in that in that league what is it like the eihl or something like that yeah, um, I think he p- ended up playing for Manchester. But how, how for you, like, how were the crowds compared to compared to Germany or Swiss or, or Russia? Yeah, it's very similar. I think all of Europe, uh, they have more of like the soccer feel where yeah they have their chance and um, there's little things after the game. Even even though uh, Sheffield lost, they were like saluting their fans and doing a full lap around. So um, I think they. It's just a diff- different atmosphere. It's, uh, you know, guys are getting fired up for, for these football matches and soccer matches, and they, they bring it over into hockey. And um, it's just it's just a way different feel. You go to a, a NHL game or even like a WHL game, you can kind of, you hear the puck all the time. Like, it's so quiet. Everybody's really, like, focusing in. Yeah. Whereas uh, in a European hockey game, all you hear is, fans cheering drums like loud the whole time it's almost hard to hard to focus at the beginning that's cool though that's gotta be such a sweet environment to to play in especially in big games like champions league or in playoffs like just having that different environment even like sometimes you go to an nhl game it's it can be boring especially if the home team's not doing so well like the the fans just they get out of it i mean it nashville is kind of funny too because you'll either get uh a really rocking crowd like i've seen nashville crowds or been to nashville games where it's it's better than a flames game which is crazy considering uh, it's a like american market versus a uh, canadian market but like you can there's two types of fans in nashville there's the people that are actually diehard preds fans and then there's the people that have no idea what the hell's going on and they're just yelling shit at their reps and i'm like what have you ever been to a hockey game before <laughs> like, yeah they just but- want to see the fights and all the other entertainment that's on the side yeah but like the cool th- 
in Nashville, the cool thing is they have a, a stage in the, on the one side. Uh, so like in between periods, they have a, they'll have a band or someone singing up there, like playing music. Like they've had a bunch of, uh, like military vets, like they've had their, the, those guys come in, in in bands and like perform in front of the, the arena and stuff like that. So it could be, it could be pretty cool in there. They've got like cheerleaders. I know like the flames <laughs> don't really have cheerleaders anymore. They've got like the, the rink girl or like the, the ice girls and, and, uh, like their, their promo team that kind of runs around, but like Nashville's got like a legit, like corn coordinated, like spirit team or whatever that they're called, which is kind of <laughs> sick, but it, it doesn't quite touch Europe, but it's, it's cool seeing like different arenas have different, different stuff. Yeah. Sheffield had, uh, some cheerleaders as well on the one side. They like blacked out the one, uh, I don't know if like, the rink is that big or, or why they had the one side, like kind of like curtained off, but, uh, like behind the other team's goalie, there was just like five or six cheerleaders just with their pom poms, like cheering <laughs> on the Steelers. But you don't, don't see that very, very much uh, else in Europe or even in the NHL. I feel like that's kind of gone away. You obviously see it in football and stuff, uh, yeah. NFL, but I think like Dallas had cheerleaders and I haven't really seen anyone else, any other hockey team really have them um, besides Nashville, uh, Nashville and Dallas was kind of Southern football towns, yeah. essentially. Carolina had them back in the day. Oh, I don't know if they still have them. It's cool. It's nice to see it a different. Like I really like what Vegas does. They, I mean, it's, it makes sense out there because they're, they're, it's just the Vegas style, but they really make it more of a, more than just a, like a sporting event. It's an entire show. It's a performance, which like I, some yeah. people, some people like, some people think it's a little over the top, but I, I just think it, it adds to it and it helps the sport for sure. Yeah. And like getting stuff acts during the intermissions. I think that goes a long way for, for kids that want to come to see the game and just another entertainment side of it that. You know, you're trying to fill the seats and a lot of it's uh, you need family members and, and different different entertainment styles to get people out there. Yeah. And that's a that's a cool thing, too. Like you bring up kids like I find that a lot in junior games like WHL, especially like it's it's really more so aimed at the kids. Then you look at, I mean, these like NCAA, these college programs. Like the, the crowds are just completely different. When, when Kami was on, he, <laughs> he talked about it. He's like, man, everyone was hammered. Like the students were going crazy. Uh, yeah. Just th that college atmosphere with just these rabid school spirit fans. That's another thing I like about the U.S. school system too is they're, they have so much more school spirit than Canada. It's like, like I know down east, I think some of the universities here in Canada, they'll, they'll have like big events and they have some, you know, a little bit more school spirit it seems but out here in alberta it's like dead like we've got one hockey game a year where you know the entire city shows up and the crow child classic <laughs> and then other than that it's like pulling teeth to get people to go to go to games yeah it seems like the the younger sports like the the max midget and the world juniors is bigger than any of the college or school sports yeah for sure um and speaking of ncaa we had a we had another major junior commitment out of the ohl out of Saginaw, it's start it's starting to happen. Like I think uh, Callum Magone, Mangone. I don't know if that's how if I pronounce his name right. Callum Mangone, but Saginaw Spirit, he committed to Lake Superior. Uh, he's a 20 year old, so you know, kind of the similar to the first commitment that we saw to ASU, um, a 20 year old going leaving for next year. But the like you said last week, the the dominoes are going to start to fall, and I think we're going to start to see more junior A guys getting decommitted and more of these these major junior guys um, going to the going to the NCAA. Yeah, it's happening for sure. I think uh, you already see a lot of USHL guys going um, to the CHL and and vice versa. Obviously, that OHL kid, and there was also the first WHL kid that that did it from Regina, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's exciting times. I think uh, you also have the GMs where we're talking about meeting and possibly changing the, the NHL draft, I heard, too. Um, they were talking about it on Spits and Chicklets. And yeah, I don't know how you do it the first year. Like, you like, do you push back one year where, you know, like you look at the teams right now, they're at the bottom that think they're going to get a first, first overall pick. But then you move the draft back another year or two years or whatever it is. It's like it, it's going to make it tough on on how to do it. But yeah, there's so much, so many moving parts that, uh, like you said, dominoes are going to start to fall. 
Yeah, I, I heard that that episode too. Like they were talking about um like do you take like the the two seasons and the the worst team out of those two seasons gets it or is it like how like how would they work that out? It would be yeah would be a thing maybe to... take an average and then do the yeah. the lottery ball. I don't know. I I feel like no matter how they would do it, not everyone's gonna be happy. <laughs> Cause yeah. like, like you look at like a San Jose or, or a Chicago this year, like you're looking at a get McKenna's got a year left, so it wouldn't be him this year. He you want, next you year. definitely want a couple of years you down want, the road to get McKenna. I mean, and, and that's the thing. So if, if they, if they end up moving it, then that's another year for him too, that he's going to either sit in the dub or yeah. like you kind of brought up last year, maybe he goes to the NCAA, especially if they do move it back. I think moving it back yeah. would be a smart decision. I just don't, I just don't know how they would do it and not, teams not get screwed over well, mckenna's already leading the whole chl in scoring as a <laughs> yeah. six a 17 year old right now or 16 year old, year old. Think, yeah. so he's not gonna play three or four years or four years whatever it is in in uh the the chl and the whl he would definitely have to move on and play somewhere else or even like with matthews he went over to switzerland and played uh during his draft year i think so yeah it's definitely uh definitely not going to be him staying in, in the whl yeah he's uh he's 16 he's an 07 so like leading the got, whole chl in scoring yeah 39 points in 20 games he's averaging two goals a, or two points a game as a 16 year old and major junior like he's he needs to step up he's gonna have 150 points by the end of the year <laughs> yeah he might be better than his cousin than bedsy I, I keep forgetting that they're that they're related yeah it's crazy imagine being family. that family yeah imagine being that family hey two absolute <laughs> stud generational players come out of the family <laughs> two exceptional status like crazy it would be cool to see him go to like a michigan or like a, a bu or a denver like one of those top teams I mean, there, there's kind of some sad news coming out of the NCAA, though. Um, American International College is ceasing their operations for their Division One hockey program, dropping down to Division Two, which Division Two bear like I think they have one conference. Um, it's mostly it's mostly D one, D three, but they they cited budgetary restraints and the overall changing landscape of the NCAA, which I find like I get the the budget thing especially with you know scholarships going up and, and the roster size increasing but the i feel like major junior players going being allowed in the ncaa would help schools like this uh especially a, a school that's you know might be a, a smaller school or have a smaller program but they have had a, a fairly successful program in in recent years making it to the tournament a few times since 2019 like i, I don't know what uh what their thought process is in terms of their like the overall landscape being tougher i think it makes it easier yeah you'd think there's more players to pick from and uh, like i'm sure they would just have to give some guys some more scholarships but if they feel like uh that's going to be too expensive or they're just not going to be able to compete with these bigger teams that are offering nil deals like i guess they're they just said oh, that's enough for us yeah it's super weird um, especially like you see more newer programs come to the NCAA too, like Tennessee state. Um, uh, like that's a, that's a small university. That's a small school. Like there, are they going to have this same issue in a few years or are they going to try to take advantage of the, the major junior eligibility and, and really start recruiting heavily from there. But, um, yeah, it's, I'm going to kind of dig more into it. It, kinda, it just got released, uh, t yesterday or today, but super sad to see like you you the last few years we've seen more schools joining the programs and now you know one that's been around for since the late 90s is leaving it's it's tough to see but hopefully more ncaa division one programs will come i think the sport is growing and i think with this new these new changes that new programs will start to pop up at hopefully some bigger schools you know down south like like a like ut like um alabama like they they put a lot of focus into their club team, so it'd be cool to see teams like that get um, get hockey like Division One programs as well. Yeah, you'll probably see it in cities where hockey is getting bigger and bigger for sure. Like even in Carolina, there's a couple schools yeah. there that could potentially move up. And obviously, I don't know a ton about um, the Southern hockey, but it's definitely uh, growing and. And you'll you'll hopefully see some of these teams make it up to Div One for sure. And like 
Arizona State already has a team. Like, when is when is University of Arizona going to get one? When are these California teams going to gonna or these California schools going to get well, Division One? UCLA, programs? that'd be sweet. Yeah, like UCLA, USC. Like, it'd be it'd be <laughs> sick to go down down to the states play play college hockey in a, a nice little beach town, like Miami. <laughs> Not Miami, yeah. Ohio, but actual Miami. <laughs> I always see kids. Yeah. They're like, they, there's always, uh, there's always a joke that's like the the my the University of Miami, Ohio coaches are recruiting kids. They're like, hey, like I'm so and so from Miami, and the kids are like, oh Miami, uh, Miami, Ohio. Yeah. They're like, oh, <laughs> they probably didn't get the fly out and realize that it was uh, in Ohio. Yeah, like, uh, where where am I Probably flying? We're going to, to Miami. <laughs> Yeah, well, so we'll, we'll keep everybody updated as we start to learn more info too. But yeah, I mean, the, the landscape of, of the sport is changing, which I think is a good thing. It's sad to see that there's one program going in a backwards direction, but hopefully maybe they'll, they'll end up getting a, a budget, a new budget uh, figured out in a couple of years. I know a few years ago, uh, Alaska Anchorage folded for, for a season or two and ended up coming back. So who knows, maybe AIC will, will be the same. Yeah, uh, for sure. Chucky, the, the we didn't talk about it last week, but the PWHL finally announced their their branding and team names. Did you did you have a chance to take a look at them? What'd you think? Yeah, I saw a couple of pretty nice jerseys kicking around. There's uh, talks that some of the logos might be stolen by <laughs> Taylor Swift, but uh, no, I, I think it, it's nice that they they actually have like team names and. Obviously, they already had the colors and the cities and stuff before, but it seems like uh, that league is just growing, growing more and more. And I see it all the time on on YouTube. Uh, they're getting lots of viewership on there, and they're showing some of the games on TSN and a couple other big networks. So now the now that the the jerseys are coming in and the team names, it's uh, it's really starting to 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 look good. Yeah, so we've got the 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 Toronto Scepters, the Ottawa Charge, New York Sirens, Boston Fleet, Minnesota Frost, um, Montreal Victory. I think is how you pronounce it. Did you uh, did you have a favorite out of them? Like I, I think the the Minnesota Frost colors are pretty sick. Like the the different shades of purple. Um, yeah. The I I keep seeing people chirping the the Ottawa Charge for basically stealing the Flames logo. Yeah, it's, it's like, just like a smaller version of the C or whatever. Yeah, and it's kind of like it's not as flamey, but it's 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 pretty pretty similar. <laughs> I think they were talking about possibly expanding already too. Oh, really? Going to some different cities, so that's good news for for women's hockey for sure. Maybe Calgary will end up with another team. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, you you said so, one of them stole the stole logo from Taylor Swift. Was that the the Toronto team, the Scepters? The, yeah, the Taylor Swift. The, some sort of logo looked similar to either a shirt she was wearing or one of her logos. But that's funny. Rumor mill. That's funny. Did you uh, did you have a favorite <laughs> like color scheme? I think I like Toronto's. Uh, Toronto's. I think the blue is it blue and kind of red and orange or something yellow uh yeah the, the, Tor the toronto one's the blue blue and yellow it kind of gives it that like um it's almost like you can make like a, a throwback or heritage type of jersey palette from it i think um yeah like if they if they wanted to get fancy with like alternate jerseys and stuff like that but yeah i mean it's it's the first batch i'm sure they'll they'll continue to get better like i don't i don't not a huge fan of the toronto blue jerseys i i don't know maybe it's just the the shade or maybe it's looking at them are I they think the like fanatic jerseys like 450 a pop or what 500 bucks pop i don't know that's a good question let me take a look at at uh <laughs> at what these jerseys are i wonder who did design them i know how you just hate the quality of the fanatics jerseys i hate fanatics in general overall <laughs> like i just everything about them makes me want to never buy a hockey jersey again <laughs> um no these so these are made by bauer so like that kind of makes sense oh. they do they did give a little bit of like the the junior jersey vibe to them but i don't mm -hmm. i don't mind it like i'm not a huge fan of like how bauer puts their logo like right above the logo but you know what can oh you yeah the, the jerseys still look pretty decent uh um, that's that's the future there's gonna be sponsorships all over all the jerseys and yeah. the helmets and 
Yeah, there's sponsors all over these. Even the it looks like even the replicas they're sponsors. I hate that there's sponsors on on replicas. <laughs> but the, what do you think of the new like LED boards that everybody has now, where like it's the, like always changing? It looks sick. Like you guys just got those in Berlin, didn't you? Yeah, we have them. But every time you rim the puck, sometimes it hits like a little like crease in the boards, oh. and it pops right out to the to the slot. Like it happens like at least two or three times a game really so i'm wondering if it's happening in the nhl too how many teams have the the led boards in the nhl because i thought it was just like a graphic that that like an ai thing um i'm sure not all the teams would have them already but there's probably a good chunk that do okay interesting uh these pwhl jerseys looks like 160 bucks canadian with no name on it 275 with a name Oh, way way better bad. priced. I'd rather buy a PWHL jersey than a Fanatics NHL jersey. <laughs> it's official. Which which jersey are you buying? Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I kind of like New York's. They have like the was it the Liberty? No, that's uh, uh, that's no, that's WNBA. Um, that's WNBA. But I like New York's colors. Whatever their team name is. The the sirens. Yeah, those those colors are sick. They kind of give off a little bit of like a Miami vibe to them, like with that with that teal blue. Yeah, almost. Yeah, those ones are probably my favorite. I like the Montreal jerseys aren't that bad. Like the the colors are really nice. I like how these logos on the jerseys are big too. I'm a big fan of like big logos on jerseys. I hate when jerseys have a small crest. Uh, yeah, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but I've always I I feel like NHL crests have gotten smaller over the years. Yeah, the bigger biggers are definitely way to go. Just takes up more on the on the jerseys, but uh, Pittsburgh threw everybody on the chopping block, eh? Yeah, everybody's on the market except for Sid. They're except gonna, for Sid, they're gonna keep Sid. Who do you? But think half she... these guys probably have like no trade clauses and stuff. So like, who who are you gonna trade? Yeah, like th- would would Malkin not have a no trade clause? I saw him come out and say that he's he like reiterated that he wants to stay in Pittsburgh. Well, Tang probably wants to stay. Like all these guys will finish out their careers there. Like yeah, they're talking about possibly buying out Carlson, but that whole yeah, I mean Carlson eleven team. million. That's probably yeah. the worst worst contract in the league. But I don't think they can get a save. I think the big problem is goaltending right now, but I haven't watched a ton of Pittsburgh games. Yeah, I feel like goaltending is a a frequent problem in in hockey but in, in the NHL in general. Like we've talked about it before. There's just no stud goaltenders anymore, like coming up. Like there's very, very few of them, especially like Canadian goaltenders, but there's there's very few, like maybe five superstar goaltenders in the NHL. Would you think that's a fair number or is that too too many, too too little. Yeah, I mean, there's there's obviously you got Shesterkin, Halibuck, Vasilevsky, um, Vasilevsky. Those are kind of like your your main three, I guess. Um, Bobrovsky in Florida is kind of up there, but yeah. the rest, uh, especially Canadian goalies, like it's it's week to week, day to day. Like I'm trying to see that Canadian roster, see which guys are gonna make it. Like Logan Thompson, he's been playing really well lately, but wouldn't have been on the radar the last couple of years because of how he was playing in Vegas. So yeah, they've uh, they've got some interesting decisions to make for Canadian goalies. Yeah, that's a, I feel like for the four nations, Canada is going to be relying heavily on their on their skaters to to put pucks in the net. <laughs> yeah, hopefully McDavid and McKinnon just rag the puck the whole game and don't don't let them get any shots on that yeah on their Mc- own on their own net mccarta mckinnon mccarta mcdavid i mean that's uh <laughs> your first breakout zoom them down the ice those are three of the fastest guys in the world they're all gonna be on one squad like yeah be they'll be getting lots of opportunities that's for sure do you uh, what do you think is gonna be like the the experience or the the outcome of, of four nations like do you think it's going to be tight hockey games or do you think it's going to be like a an all-star very high scoring because the, the sport in general is getting higher and higher scoring and then you put the you put the best players on the ice against each other do you think the the defensive players are going to have an advantage or do you think the offensive players are going to take over uh, I, I still think there's going to be a ton of goals like that's yeah. just the way hockey's moving um 
you're not really going to have many shut down defensemen playing in this four nations. Like you, you probably want to get your most skilled, you know, puck possession guys. And um, I'm, I'm sure it'll be tight games though. Like it, it won't be like the olden days where it's two one or one nothing. And, you know, you got to win it in overtime kind of, kind of game. I think you'll still see, you know, the odd, uh, you know, third or fourth line guy that chips in with some big goals, but you're going to have to really rely on, on your offense and on your power play to, to win. And all the guys are going to take, take it super seriously because they want to play in the Olympics uh, next year. So I think uh, you might see some, some big hits. I don't know if you'll see much fighting, but it'll be uh, some good games to watch. Yeah. You never really see fighting in, an international or best on best competition, which like makes sense, but it's uh it's definitely better than the all star kind of systems where guys will actually try. So I do like that, and that's a good point about next year. Like these guys are basically gonna be playing for a spot on the Olympic teams, and it'll be I'm more excited to see the Olympics than I am four nations, just because the there's only the four teams. But I think it's a good warm up to to what we're gonna see next year. Yeah, and we haven't seen it in what eight or nine years since yeah. what twenty fourteen or something. So yeah. it's been a been a long time. It would have been pretty sweet for you though if you ended up getting to play uh, a few years ago in the Olympics if you weren't. Oh, I know. I was so close. I think twenty eighteen, I had a, a really good chance to make it. Uh, twenty twenty two, I was injured, so yeah, there was no possibility of me going. But um, last cut, so it, it would have been really cool to, to go to the olympics they they had called you right before you got injured didn't they in 2022 i think we talked about that before yeah they told me that i was on the list and they were watching me and then uh kind of had a bad concussion and missed Man. about two months so was right in the middle of january and february when the tournament was going to be so that was that was kind of tough that would have been so cool yeah that would have been like the the one that you the one that you missed, hey? Like because you you had you had World Juniors. Did you did you play World Championships? I never played World Championships, no. But I played Spangers. under seventeen, under eighteen, a uh, couple World Juniors, also Spangler. three Spangler Cups, yeah. and Olympics would have been pretty nice. Olympics would have been sick. I mean, you would have had to make some make some more room in the trophy case, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little full. But I, I, I mean, don't think I'll be in this this Olympics, unfortunately, <laughs> or the, or the next one. I'll be 40, 41 or forty two by that time. So <laughs> maybe you'll still be playing though. Go uh, pull a Yager, <laughs> You'll be playing until you're sixty. Yeah, maybe in the English league or something. <laughs> Own a team, play for yourself. Yeah. A quick break to hear from our brand new presenting sponsor, wins.io. To sign up, all you got to do is enter your email, enter your password, and use our promo code AAS to get an exclusive no deposit offer and get 50 free spins on gates of wins. Again, that's the bonus code AAS for Athlete Artist Show. You get 50 free spins on gates of wins. Your max winnings is $100. Your turnover wager requirements is 40 times. Minimum deposit required for withdrawal verification and general terms apply. What stands out with wins? All promotions come with no wagering and they reward players up to 35% on daily and weekly basis in terms of cash back and rake back. The loyalty program is called Wins Up and users can read more about it at wins.io slash wins up. That's W-I-N-Z-U-P. Again, use our promo code AA Show on sign up and get 50 free spins on Gates of Wins. And now back to the show. Chucky, what else have we got here? NCAA, PWHL, we covered that. Pittsburgh's a mess. I mean, Winnipeg still only lost one game this year, which is nuts. They're on an absolute tear. 15 and 1. They're on a mission. That's for sure. It's I keep seeing everyone destroying the Predators too and seeing the comparisons in the off seasons between Winnipeg and the Preds. Like Preds spent a hundred and some million and the Jets spent like a couple hundred thousand, a couple million, and they're fifteen to one. The Preds are like under five hundred. <laughs> it's like yeah, Chops shit. is talking about a rebuild already. It's like oh man, yeah. There was uh, there's talk about coaching changes too. Like I know people are have been talking about uh, Joe Quenville going to Boston. I know Grinelli was saying that wasn't gonna happen. There he said, I I don't know. I always take it with a grain of salt whenever Grinelli talks, but uh, when he was talking about 
Boston saying, yeah, they're not going to touch him because of the drama they had a couple of years ago with drafting uh, a certain player and they were cut. Oh, they're, yeah. They're, they're, they're scared to get canceled again. Um, but yeah, imagine Trotsy just comes right down from the GM box, starts coaching again. That would be hilarious if he just fired <laughs> his coach and said, I'm going to take back over. Could happen. I could definitely see it. Trotz was the the, the coach in, in Nashville when I was there. And he was there for a really long time before he ended up getting, I think, fired or moved on to to Washington after that. Or was it maybe Islanders? But, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of teams kind of struggling right now, especially if you look at Boston. They haven't had a great start. But their whole training camp was a mess with the Swayman situation. And oh, yeah. All the, the sideshow stuff. I think eventually they're going to figure it out. Hopefully – before the coach gets fired, but yeah, there's there's lots of teams that you thought would have been in the top five or ten that are are really struggling. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how things kind of shake out. But it kind of just shows that like hockey is so different from other sports. Where like you see in the NBA, these teams, you know, they spend however many millions, hundreds of millions of dollars on three players, and they they can go to the championship how how many years in a row? Like you saw it with LeBron, you see it. You saw with Curry and and that crew. It's like hockey. You never know. You ne- you never know. It's it's not a, it's not a one man sport. It's barely like a one line sport. You can you can yeah. have one one sick line and do okay. But I mean, especially once playoffs come, everything changes in, and anyone that's in has a chance. And yeah, and even if you get it. like two or three guys, like it doesn't mean you're gonna be that great. Look at Nashville. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Minnesota a few years ago, they got Parise and Suter, and those guys ended up getting bought out, I'm pretty sure, after that. Like, yeah. Tavares going to Toronto, like, that's probably considered, like, a little bit of a hometown thing, trying to stack up a team, and they've barely been, out of get, been able to get out of the first round of the playoffs. So yeah. hockey is a really tough sport to, to go and just try and stack a team somewhere unless you're going through the draft. Yeah, and you look at other, even other sports like baseball. They spend three hundred million dollars a year on players, and like you look at the Yankees. This was their first time getting back to the World Series in fifteen years, and they still blew it. Like all these teams, I mean, they're playing the Dodgers, who also spends a few hundred million dollars a year on players. But it's not like baseball, where the the bottom team, like you've, I'm sure you've seen Moneyball. Everybody sees it, like the the poorer teams against the rich teams. It's hockey. It doesn't it doesn't really have have that like there's poor poorer teams and richer teams but it doesn't have as big of an effect on you know paying guys unless it was like arizona i heard that they had a super low inside the team cap that was lower than Mm -hmm. than their actual league cap but yeah it's you you don't see it as much which is it's nice i feel like that kind of kind of stuff can ruin the sport but i still think the cap should go up to like 100 million it would be nice to see the guys get paid a little bit more yeah and some teams should be able to pay a little bit more. You just have yeah. to pay a penalty. Like sure. Toronto wants to spend over the cap. You know, some other okay. teams should should get some money for it. Yeah. Um, wins, bets of the week. Didn't do so great last week, but tomorrow we got Jake Paul, or when this episode drops, we got Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. Who you got? We talked about it a little bit last week. Let's make it official. What do we got here? Have you have you have you looked at wins? Have you looked at the odds? We've got uh, Jake Paul's a one hundred and fifty, Mike Tyson's two hundred and sixty money on the money line, and uh, it's it's nice on wins because we can we can bet on KO TKO, TKO decision draw. We can we there's we have more options than than previous partners, which is nice. So what do you think? And who's gonna win? And how are they gonna win, Chucky? I want to see a Tyson knockout. That would be that would be great over Jake Paul, but. I think you're you're more of the the fighting uh, specialty, and we haven't been gambling that great lately. So maybe uh, you need to take over on this one. Yeah, I mean, I th- I think Tyson by knockout is best case scenario for everybody. It's best case scenario for the sport. It's best case scenario for Tyson's legacy. I don't think. Yeah, he can go out on top. Like just yeah. just be his last fight ever. Beat up the guy that's been chirping you for how many years and. Sail off into the sunset. Collect a big bag from Netflix. I and I don't think it hurts Jake Paul that much to lose, in terms of his career. Um, I think losing to Tommy Fury is hurts him more than than losing to to Mike Tyson of all people. But if Jake Paul wins, 
even though Tyson is 60, almost 60 years old, that's a huge, huge moment for Jake Paul and his career. Who does he fight next after that? It could it could be part of the script. Jake Paul might might end up winning. And I know he wants to fight Canelo in the future. Um, I don't know if Canelo would ever do that. I've, there's been talks of him fighting um, some other some other high profile boxers, but he's a he's a heavy guy now. Like he's going up to heavyweight for this fight, so. Depending, yeah. it's not like he can fight like a Ryan Garcia or like a Devin Haney or, or those guys because those, those guys are tiny. So he has to stay. Would they around. do a rematch with Fury or no? They talked about it for a bit. I don't know. I haven't heard Jake Paul even mention Tommy Fury's name in, in a while now. Like that, there were some things where I think Fury um, like pulled out or just wouldn't sign a contract, or there were things with how much he was getting offered and. I don't know. I know Jake was giving him a hard time. Well, this is the most amount of money we're ever going to offer you and that you've ever been offered for a fight. And this is the last opportunity you have. And it didn't happen. So who knows if that fight will end up coming back around. But I mean, I would I'd love to it. see a KSI uh, Jake Paul fight. See that that could be the next one after Tyson. I I don't like KSI in boxing. I just I think I think Jake Paul's above him, to be honest, in, in the sport. Um, I think KSI should stick to his influencer boxing, you know, fighting these TikTokers and shit. But he but, beat Logan Paul, and Logan Paul thinks sometimes thinks he's better than Jake Paul. So maybe yeah. we'll see like a little exhibition. Jake Paul fights uh, his brother Logan, and then the title fight is KSI and and Jake. I would love to see Jake and Logan fight. I think Jake would plaster him. Logan's a you terrible think? boxer. Yeah. Logan's Logan's one of the most athletic people out there. He's unbelievable in WWE, but he's not a good boxer. He couldn't even he couldn't beat Dylan Dan or he beat Dylan Dennis, but he couldn't knock out Dylan Dennis. And Dennis threw five punches in the entire fight. Yeah, that's true. So that was that fight was disappointing. <laughs> yeah, Tyson by knockout. I'll I'll put money on that. We've uh our funds are are low on wins after we lost a lot last week. But should we should we take him by knockout? I don't think he gives us, doesn't give us an option for the round, but Tyson by knockout. I like that. I like that. Tyson, actually, by KO TK, or TKO. T, KO, TKO, or DQ. What are you thinking? I like it. Putting the money on Tyson. 100 bucks wins 375. Hopefully, we win that tomorrow night so we have some money for streaming this weekend. <laughs> the other big fight on the card is Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor, the rematch. I don't know if you saw their first fight, but um, Katie Taylor got the got the decision which was controversial i watched it i thought amanda serrano did enough to win the fight a lot of other people thought amanda serrano did enough to win that fight so i hope amanda serrano beats katie taylor and then she faces uh sky nicholson for for the wbc championship undisputed championship so serrano by knockout i think serrano by decision is more likely Just decision i think Ser serrano there's been a couple of fights previously where Serrano could have knocked him out and she held back a little bit. So but what's I don't, the odds? Odds for Serrano Taylor, 199 Katie Taylor, 176 Serrano. It's pretty close. Katie Taylor by KO, TKO, or DQ is 15 to 1. Wow. Serrano by KO, TKO, or DQ is 5 to 1. Draws. So Serrano is a favorite. Seems that way, yeah. I would take her by decision. Like that. Are you planning on watching the fights? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be watching them. Um, what about yourself? They're going to be on kind of late for you, hey? Yeah, it'd be like in the middle of the morning. So probably watch them the next day or yeah, watch the highlights. Makes sense. Um, there it is. Locked in. Mike Tyson, Jake Paul. We picked Tyson by KO. Amanda Serrano by decision over Katie Taylor in their rematch tomorrow night. Or it'll be tonight, technically, if you're watching this on Friday. Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. Wins, bets of the week. Thank you, wins. Thank you, Rumble. Chucky, anything else you want to cover this week? No, that's good. Safe Boom. flight to Nashville. Thank you. I appreciate it. Leaving Tuesday. We'll be there for a month. We'll be, uh, I, won't, I won't have this little set, but I'll be bringing, I'll be bringing my gear so we'll be able to film. Uh, try to make, make the house look pretty. Maybe I'll do a pod from the hot tub or something. But uh... Yeah. Crooks <laughs> is going to be living the dream down there. Yeah, he's not gonna want to come home. He's gonna have so much room to for zoomies and running around the house. He's gonna get to he's gonna get to play in the grass. I'm gonna take him Chilling outside. In the hot tub. Did you see the backpack I got him? 
Yeah. And got you a little take that backpack. on the plane? Uh, the, no, the, ba the backpack's for, for taking him with me around Nashville. He's got a little carrier for, for the, the cabin on the plane. But So I'm going to put the, the backpack in, in, in our checked bag, and then we'll be going on Broadway with him in the little backpack. Might get him a little oh, cowboy perfect. hat, too. <laughs> You're going to be the crazy cat guy walking downtown Nashville. With maybe it'll cowboy get, hat on. Maybe it'll get the podcast some views. I'll be like, who is this guy? <laughs> you gotta do some man in the street interviews with that. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure all the bachelorette parties will love him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We will uh we'll see you next week. Thank you again, Rumble. Thank you, wins. Chucky, congrats on the Champions League win. When's the when's the next game before we before we end off here? Next week, week after? Uh n next Tuesday next tuesday all right so we will i guess we'll cover that next week on the pod next tuesday you're playing i'm flying we will talk to you guys then peace